In the last stream, we were working on crafting some higher tier seeds utilizing the infusion altar from mystical agriculture. So far, we've managed to get lapis, redstone, iron, and diamond seeds, but currently it's only iron seeds that we have a dedicated farm for, and right now we only have a few diamond seeds and then the one redstone and one lapis seed. Now, what I want to work on in today's stream is ideally I want to get a mob farm up and running because I think a mob farm is going to make our life a lot easier going forward because it's going to give us a bunch of drops that we're going to need. Things like ender pearls are going to make progressing through in the pack so much easier. Speaking of progression though, we have had an update to the pack since the last episode and the quest book looks a lot nicer, is a bit more organized now than it was previously and the main chapter quest line here while still a little bit sprawling is definitely a little bit easier to follow this right here now says the start and uh, makes it apparent that this is where you start and then uh, the quest does kind of follow a bit more logically through from there which is pretty nifty now if we're going to build a mob farm we need a place to put that mob farm and what i am thinking is i'm thinking of duplicating this platform behind the smeltery and putting it there. The reason for that is that the mob farm does need to be at least 24 blocks away from wherever we are most of the time, and I feel like most of the time we are right about here. And so if we do build it all the way back over there, that should be at least 24 blocks away and should give us the best chance of spawning the most mobs. Now, we could just cut away and build the platform like I've done many times before. However, people have been suggesting things like the building gadgets here. Uh, we actually don't want the building gadget or the exchanging gadget though. What we want is the copy paste gadget. This is a super nifty tool that's going to allow us to select an area, copy it, and then if we have the blocks in our inventory, we can then just paste it again. And so that's going to make it substantially easier for us to extend out the platform and continue with our pre-existing pattern going forward. To make this, we need four iron, two redstone, two emeralds, and one lapis. We do currently have four emeralds. Before I use these, let me quickly check that emerald seeds don't require just four emeralds. They do. Okay, so in that case, I'm probably not going to use two of them to make the copy-paste gadget, at least not until we've made the emerald seeds. I was under the impression the emerald seeds might require two blocks of emeralds, much like we did with the diamonds, but given that it doesn't, it really makes no sense for us to not spend like a few minutes here quickly crafting up four more Supremium Essence so that we can then get infinite emeralds going forward. So right now, I did see a little bit of Tertium in our chest. I don't know if we have any Imperium. We totally do, only two though, that's fine. And so yeah, real quick, let's go and first of all, let me move these two storage doors to the other side of the platform just so they're a little easier to access going forward. I think we'll also go ahead and move this bed as well. Let me put these here and this here. And then if we just go ahead and take what's left in there, which actually, as it turns out, isn't much, we can uh, continue harvesting more Inferium Essence and craft that down until we have four Supremium Essence, at which point we can then look at crafting that copy paste gadget. All right, so a bunch of essence crafting later, and we now have four more Supremium Essence. Let me dump the rest of this junk back into the system. Let's put our bed down for now, maybe right about here, and just right click to set our respawn point. And then now, if we grab one more set of Prosperity Seeds, we should then be able to take all of this down once again to our Infusing Altar, and once this craft is complete with one, two, three, four emeralds and one, two, three, four supremium, we should basically have an infinite amount of emeralds going forward. And that is going to give us, at the very least, the two emeralds required to make the copy paste gadget. Now, the one thing we do need for the copy paste gadget that we don't currently have is power. And so we do need to look at getting some form of power before we can actually use the gadget itself. Now, there is a quest line up here to craft solar panels from the Solar Flux Reborn mod, and they don't seem too difficult to make. This first one here is just five wood, one redstone dust, and three mirrors. The three mirrors are made with glass and iron. None of that's too bad. The first solar panel does only generate one FE per tick, which is not a lot of power. It's actually the almost the smallest amount of power 
that you could possibly make. However, you can then craft that up into a tier two solar panel and then a tier three solar panel and tier four, five, and I think you can go six, seven, and maybe even eight or higher potentially with add-on mods. So you can get a lot of power from those solar panels if we go high with it, which we probably won't do just yet, but I think we almost certainly can get a, uh, a tier three solar panel fairly quickly here, which should be more than good enough for us to get power into our copy paste gadget at a reasonable speed. Again, we seem to not be getting seeds at the rate that we'd expect with these higher tier seeds like emerald i've got uh, almost 20 essence here and still no second seed much like with the diamonds before it either way we do now have enough emerald essence to recraft the two emeralds that we need and so if we go ahead and grab some redstone along with the plethora of iron that we now have available to us and a little bit of lapis that should be basically everything we need to make the copy paste gadget Nice. Now, as far as the solar panels go, you can see here that it starts with solar panel tier one, goes all the way up to tier eight, and then there are additional solar panels from add-on mods. The chaotic one here, I think, is from Draconic Evolution. This one is very difficult to craft, but does generate half a million <laughs> redstone flux per tick just when it's, uh, it's placed under the sun, which is pretty insane. But for now, we're going to start with the baby steps. And for that, between streams, I did do a bunch of gravel to sand hammering. So people in the Twitch chat did point out that instead of hammering cobble into gravel, we can actually craft gravel using dirt essence and stone essence, both of which we have. Our stone essence is here and our dirt essence is here. And so between streams, I did exactly that. I grabbed some stone essence. I grabbed some dirt essence. I crafted it into gravel and then using this new diamond hammer that I made, it's made in the exact same way as the stone hammer we made previously, but it has more durability. I used that in combination with our diamond wand to turn a bunch of gravel into a bunch of sand. And then I started smelting a bunch of that sand into a bunch of glass in preparation for this solar panel crafting. Now, this is almost certainly an excessive amount of glass, but I think it's gonna be useful for us to have also due to the fact that I'd like to use potentially dark glass for our mob farm later on in the episode. But let's have a look here. If we want to get the first year of solar panel, we need to craft three mirrors, which is just one set of mirrors. I'm gonna go ahead and craft a lot of those <laughs> and then we can go ahead and craft that basically directly into the solar panel. Nice. And the cool thing about these solar panels is that you can charge items directly inside of the solar panel. So if we put this down inside of here, there is a charging slot in the top right and we can just place the copy paste gadget directly into there. And if it wasn't night, then the solar panel would start generating one redstone flux per tick or one FE per tick. Those two uh, units of measure are interchangeable, but uh, it would start generating one FE per tick and that power would start going into the copy paste gadget. Now, obviously at one FE per tick, this is gonna take quite a while to fill the 500,000 uh, FE buffer that the copy paste gadget has. And so, as we mentioned, we're gonna upgrade this to a higher tier of solar panel. The tier two solar panel here generates eight FE per tick, and that kind of makes sense because to craft it, you just craft it together eight tier one solar panels with a regular old piston. For that, we're going to need some cobblestone. We already have some redstone, and we do have a bunch of iron in our chest as well from all of the crafting we did previously. And so if we go ahead and do something like this, we can get 11 solar panels, and then we can craft all of those with the piston to get a tier two solar panel. Now, if we want to craft it up to tier three, the tier three solar panel, this one right here, produces 32 FE per tick. Still not a particularly large amount, but I think it is going to be enough to fill our copy paste gadget substantially fast enough to where we can use it to actually expand our base. For this, we need four tier two solar panels with a block of iron, a redstone repeater, and then three photovoltaic cells. These are made with the mirrors from before, lapis and glass. So for all of this, we need lapis and redstone. As I mentioned before, we do now have lapis and redstone seeds. And so it's probably worth spending a minute here quickly trying to get a bit more lapis and a bit more redstone using those seeds. And of course, much like we've been doing before, try and duplicate those seeds to get more essence faster. Also, at this point in time, we can almost certainly get rid of all of these beetroot seeds. I don't think we need any of them going forward. I think we have enough beetroot now. And obviously if we needed more in the future, we could just replace them down. But uh, now I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly duplicate these redstone and lapis seeds until we have a, a fairly decent amount of both redstone and lapis. Okay, so a little bit of essence and seed making later. And we should now be able to craft a bunch of lapis and a bunch 
of redstone. And that's probably more redstone that we're going to need, but that is fine. And so can we get one tier three solar panel? We're going to get two because you make them in sets of two. But if we're going to do that right now, we have one tier two and we need four of them. For that, we need to make three more because we currently have the one of them. So we need to make 24 more tier one solar panels, which means we need yet more wood. That's fine. We can put some of this stuff away for now. We obviously have all of the glass for that. That shouldn't be a problem. It seems like it should be pretty straightforward here. Let me make at least three more pistons as well because we need those to craft up into tier two. For that, we need yet more cobblestone, which we have basically an infinite amount of. So we'll take three of those and then we'll make more of these. So now we just need six more tier one solar panels. That is fine. 18 should be the perfect amount to get six more of those, which should be the perfect amount to get one more tier two solar panel. And once we have that, we're just missing the block of iron, easy enough. The redstone repeater, which just needs two redstone torches. We need two regular old Minecraft sticks, which we may or may not have in here. We don't, we got one singular stick, that's fine. We can craft some more and we also need some stone, which we have, nice. That should be everything for the redstone repeater two redstone torches, and boom. And then in terms of making the three photovoltaic cell tier ones, we are going to need nine more regular mirrors. That's fine. And then we should be able to craft those basically directly into three tier one photovoltaic cells. And boom, that gets us two tier three solar panels. Tier four, again, isn't too bad. We uh, would just need to make two more tier threes, which again is, you know, however many more tier twos and a ton more tier ones. And then the photovoltaic cell tier two just requires clay and lapis. It's really not too bad, but I think that the tier three here is probably going to be fast enough. Again, if we quickly sleep to skip forward to the daytime, we should be able to throw in our copy paste gadget into one of these like so. And that's going to start filling up pretty quickly. We're already at 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, 10,000. Obviously, it's still going to take a little while to get up to 500,000, but we don't need that much power to actually start using the copy paste gadget. And of course, the fact that we do have two of these means that if we wanted to at any point in time, we can just take this out, move it over to the other one, and it's going to get a quick boost of power as it drains whatever power is backed up in that second solar panel. While that's charging up, let's gather all of the resources required for copying and pasting here, that being a bunch of dark oak logs, some stone bricks, and some more stone bricks. Both of these are chiseled. So right now, our chisel is pretty low. One thing you can do, again, now that we have the ability to grow diamonds, we can invest in a diamond chisel, which is just, again, a chisel that has a higher durability. Very nice for us to have. Let's take a bunch of stone essence. And again, we could probably do with harvesting a bit more of that. That's going to get us a ton of stone. Again, let's do that the correct way, Isaac, which is like this. I always accidentally make regular cobblestone instead of stone, which is not what I want to do. Once we have a bunch of stone, we can use our chisel to make a bunch of dent and to make a bunch of encased brick. I'll get two stacks of each here, even though I'm pretty sure we need more dents. You know what? I'll get like half a stack more encased and the rest I'll do in dent. Perfect. Over here, let's grab our copy paste gadget. It's got almost half of its uh, charge in there, which is very nice indeed. And so what we should be able to do uh, real quick, actually, we do need to get some more dark oak as well. So I'll take a few of those and let's do something like this and boom, perfect. That's going to be more than enough. So if I'm not mistaken, what we should be able to do is uh, open up the copy paste gadget menu. To do this, you're going to go to options, controls, uh, type in gadget, and then go to category. It is this one right here, the settings menu. By default, it's set to G, but G is conflicted with other key bindings. So I've just changed mine to numpad one. You can change that to whatever you like. Uh, we're going to set it to copy. Shift right click here. And then right click on this block here. And that's going to say area copied. And we could have made this higher, but then it would copy the smell tree, which is not what we're after. And in fact, in this area, that's still going to copy the smell tree. So that's not what we're after at all. Instead, we could copy this one. This one, I don't think is going to try to copy the water, although it might. Let me shift right click here and then right click here. That's going to set the area to there. Then we can open this up and switch it back to paste mode. And now you'll see that we have this platform that we should be able to place down. So what we can do here right now, it's um, it's one block too high. One thing you can do if you hold the button again is you can go to open GUI. And then if you 
make adjustments here that will move where the copy is going to get placed. For us, we can set the Y level to negative one, like that, and that's going to move it down in line with where we want it. And so we want to put ours one to the left here. Again, if we go back here, go to open GUI and mess around with the X axis, that's going to move it over one to the left. And if that is in line, which I think it is, we should be able to just right click and it's going to place down everything that we had. Now, again, because we copied over the area that had the crafting station and the tinker stations in there, it's left a few gaps. But what we should be able to do is just kind of go ahead and fill in the remainder of those gaps. And now if we reset the area by going to copy again and shift right clicking here and right clicking here, we now have the ability to copy this exact layout and paste it in the future. We can take this even further though if we wanted to, because we can of course copy the farmland as well. And I think we could take it even further than that and that we could also copy the slabs. So what I'm gonna do real quick, let me grab some more dirt out of our chest. And we could probably do it with even more dirt actually, because I'm gonna go ahead and break all of this and I'm going to replace this inferior farmland with dirt just so that we can copy it and have it as a blueprint that we can use. So once we have this ready, again, shift right click here and right click here. That's gonna set the new area. And so now we'll go back to paste mode and let's see about pasting this over on this side here. So we're gonna place that right about there. Perfect. And then we can do the same thing, of course, over on this side. This one is gonna go here because we've actually not built this one yet. That's fine. Let's do something like this. That's gonna paste this one down. And then the next one, is gonna go a bit further forward here. Let me quickly grab some slabs. Once we've got those slabs down, again, we can go one, two, three, four, five, and place that here. I think that's correct. And so now what I'm thinking basically is that if we fill in these gaps here with yet more slabs, we should then be able to copy and paste basically this entire area. And at that point, we can kind of continue out into the distance as much as we like. Whether or not we actually want to just continue this grid pattern forever is a good question. And uh, we can also use it, of course, to expand out our lower level base as well, because right now we only have the one 11 by 11 grid down there, but uh, having more of those is going to be helpful for the future. Uh, let me quickly finish up the remainder of these slabs here. Okay, so once all of this is ready, we should then be able to take our copy paste gadget, and as per usual, if we shift right click here, uh, if we first set it back to copy and then shift right click here and then go and right click on the far corner all the way over here. I'm going to do this. We are going to end up putting down some dirt that is unnecessary, but I want to make sure we get the torches and the dark oak logs in. From there, we can actually go to open materials list and it shows you all the materials that we need if we're gonna copy this. So right now we're missing oak slabs. So if we tried to put this down, we don't have enough oak slabs to make it happen. We need 375, we have just over a hundred. And so let me quickly clear out some of the stuff in my inventory here and let's craft up a bunch more oak slabs to see if we can't get enough to make this happen. So now we have enough of everything. If we go back to paste mode, we can look at just pasting this entire thing down, which I think is just that. Look at that, look how much easier that was. And so now if we really wanted to going forward, it's just a case of gathering these materials out of our colossal chest and we can continue to place down even more of these farms and these kind of utility platforms in the center going forward, which is really nifty stuff and is also a very quick way, uh, an easy way of us getting more farms for things like diamond, redstone, lapis, emerald, gold, whatever else it is we want to make in the future. And the only downside with our current setup is that we get rid of the dirt here after it's all been placed. And it did even place the torches down as well. So with these new setups, we don't have to worry about mobs. Speaking of mobs, the next thing we're going to work on here is, of course, the mob farm. So I'm thinking of putting it on our new center utility platform, this one right here. And for now, it's going to be a case of just kind of building a dark box and letting the mobs spawn. The tricky part is killing those mobs. So I think what we're going to want to do is get the mobs to spawn in on this platform. Uh, also, as per usual, F3A to reload those textures there. So we want to get the mobs to spawn. And then I think we want to try and push them towards something that kills them. We do have a few options for that. There are spikes in the pink from a few different mods. Extra Utilities adds spikes. Uh, mob Grinding Utilities adds spikes. And Cyclic adds spikes as well. On top of that, we do also have 
the mob masher from mob grinding utilities which i think is just the best option because it has the ability to be upgraded with all of these upgrades here and upgrades such as looting and sharpness make it insanely powerful if you put the maximum 10 sharpness upgrades in it will kill mobs instantly and if you put the maximum number of looting upgrades in the mobs will drop an incredible amount of loot and in the future if we need mob heads for example if we need wither skeleton skulls or just creeper head skeleton skulls the beheading upgrade makes that substantially easier as well the slightly trickier bit is getting the mobs to the mob masher we don't have vector plates never mind in the newest version of the pack they did add dark utilities and so vector plates are available here we did have entity conveyors these work in a similar way you put these down uh, mobs will spawn on top of them and then the mobs are pushed in the direction of the entity conveyor there was also the option of fans from mob grinding utilities these ones right here these mob fans also do a similar trick but i think the vector plates are going to be by far and away our best option here to make the vector plates we need six blank plates which are made with stone and black dye we need a slime ball and then two sugar so right now we actually don't have any sugar although i'm fairly certain that sugar can seeds are obtained by sifting dirt we have done a bit of dirt sifting and would you look at that we have some sugar can seeds along the same lines here we do also have the mod sned installed in the pack and so if we do something like this you can craft two sand into one sned and sned is a super nifty block that just grows sugarcane faster now of course you do have to bear in mind that uh, as with regular sand sned does fall if you place it down uh, without a block underneath it and so let's quickly do something like this and then place that sned down once again like so then we can place the sugarcane on the sned although what we might have to do actually we might have to place down the sugarcane on the sand first break it and then place the actual sugarcane on the snet that makes complete sense but now this should grow faster and i actually don't know if this is affected by us sprinting by the way i have turned the particle effects off for the growth animation so the growth is still going to happen but the particle effects have been turned off because it makes the uh, the video pretty tricky to watch on twitch so i've turned that off for the time being but um this should hopefully grow the sugarcane a little bit faster it's still not crazy fast, and in fact, it's kind of slow to the point where I think it is genuinely going to be faster for us to just get more dirt essence, craft it into compressed dirt, and then just sift more dirt to get more sugarcane seeds. We can then use those sugarcane seeds to just get sugarcane and use that to craft up the vector plates, because I don't think the odds on the sugarcane seeds are that bad. All right, so a little bit of dirt sifting later. We now have the ability to get a fair bit of sugar can fairly quickly here now we can craft two of these down into sugar and that's going to allow us to get our first set of vector plates we are going to need more than six though because i think we're going to have this center area here which is six by six in total be our mob spawning area so we're going to need at least 36 maybe 35 vector plates in total if we have one spot for the mob masher that should be fine though um we'll leave this sugarcane growing it's going to take a little while and we can always get more uh, sugarcane with the sifting method in the future although i guess what i might as well do if we're going to quickly pivot to doing something else is i might as well get a bit more sned and just start growing this other sugarcane that i have in my inventory all right while we wait for this to grow let's look at getting some dark glass because we do need the area that the mobs are going to spawn in to be dark and would you look at that i completely forgot that our non actually i think uh ooh, okay we've kind of indirectly already started a bit of a mob farm let me sleep here uh, the reason for that is that all of the farmland isn't actually um farmland yet it's just dirt and obviously the mobs can spawn in the center of those dirt platforms which is why they are doing so the good news is is that we know that mobs will spawn on this platform if it's dark enough so that is good to know and uh, we'll put down some torches on there just as soon as those mobs have burned but uh, dark glass is going to allow us to uh, darken the platform enough for mobs to spawn whilst still allowing us to see into that area now there are a bunch of different dark glasses that you can make but the one from dark utilities here i think might be the easiest it's just six black glass with black dye and a charcoal and then black glass of course is just glass and black dye black dye we can get fairly easily using batania so there is a quest all the way down at the bottom left of the quest line here to get floral fertilizer uh, there's also a quest right here to get animals it says to make grass you only need to sift dirt we've done that uh, that gets you grass seeds and then we can put them down it does talk about bait we'll use bait in the future 
when we're looking to spawn specific mobs. For now though, uh, what we should be able to do is take some of the grass seeds that we did just get from sifting dirt, these ones right here, and we can dedicate one of these platforms, let's say this one, to being a grass platform. Not only is that gonna give us the potential to get passive mobs in the future, but it's also going to allow us to try and get some floral fertilizer. In fact, never mind, the Twitch chat is right here in that uh, tint of glass from Mob Ground Utilities is the same as dark glass, but it is cheaper to make. It's just five coal and four glass, or five charcoal and four glass. And so what we should probably look to do here is get some coal seeds, which are four coal, four prudentium, and a prosperity seed base. Do we have four coal in our chest here? The answer would appear to be no. I think I might have used the last of the coal making torches like a fool. That's fine, we can quickly head on through to the mining dimension to try and find four coal. Once we have that, we already have the four prudentium, and of course we already have the prosperity seed base, and then we can dedicate one of our new farms to coal, and that should make getting enough coal to make a lot of this tinted glass fairly easy. And of course we already have a ton of glass available from all of the smelting that we did at the start of the episode. So that did not take long at all. Once we have four coal, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And there we go. Let's go do some coal seed farming, shall we? All right. I think that's probably enough coal essence. I'm going to throw these extra coal seeds away because I don't really think we need them. We could, of course, have put them in the uh, the seed power generator, but I don't think that's strictly necessary. Speaking of which, let me put my copy paste gadget away here just to uh, get our solar panels doing something. Of course, right now they are full. And so we should look at getting some kind of um, battery or power cell to hold all that power at some point in the, uh, the not so distant future. But this is more than enough coal for us here. Let's continue to craft the remainder of that down. Fantastic. And then let's take a ton of glass out of here and let's see if we can't make a fair bit of tinted glass. I think that is probably gonna be more than enough. Let's go ahead, take that. And over on this platform, we're gonna start putting that down, but we do kind of want to get the vector plates first. So what I think we're gonna do, we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. I might end up putting the glass in the corners as well. Yeah, I think we'll do something like this as well, actually. We'll go all the way into the corners and then we'll just build this high enough. We'll probably build it at least three tall so that we can get Enderman to spawn. And then we're gonna have the mobs just pushed into the corner here where the mob masher is going to kill them. So over here, we have managed to get a little bit more sugar cane, which is good. We do still need though, actually, to get the black dye in order to make the vector plates. And so it is a good thing that we got the grass down over here. Let's go ahead and let's grab some dust out of our system if we have any, which we might not. We've kind of been turning all of our uh, dust into clay. And so instead, let's quickly grab some stone essence and some dirt essence. In fact, I'll just harvest some more here. We'll once again use that to craft some gravel. I think the recipe is something like this. It totally is. Good stuff. That gets us a ton of gravel. Let's quickly go and hammer that down into a little bit of dust, and then we can sift that dust to try and get some bone meal. We don't need a ton of bone meal, and obviously once we have the mob farm up and running, we should be able to get a lot more bone meal a lot faster, but we do need a little bit here just to get the floral fertilizer to get the black dye to allow us to make the vector plates. Once we've got a bunch of dust, we can then craft that into compressed dust because again, we do have the compressed sieve. And at that point, we should just be able to start sifting all of this compressed dust to try and get a little bit of bone meal. All right, we've got uh, the ability to get a lot more bone meal here if we need it, but seven might actually be enough. So with this, what we can do, we can go ahead and grab some of the dye we already have and some of the beetroots that we already have because with four red dye, we can craft our first floral fertilizer, which looks something like this. The floral fertilizer can then be used on grass to get you mystical flowers. The flower that we are after is bread, but uh, after we have bread, the flower that we're actually after is the mystical black flower because that can be used to get black dye. That unfortunately is gray, not black. And we do have to be careful because in this version of Batania, if we run, we turn the normal flowers into two high flowers, and those two high flowers do need to be broken with a shear. So that's something we need to bear in mind. I should probably 
just go ahead and get a pair of shears. I'm going to make four more floral fertilizer here. I'm hopeful that we'll get some black dye within those four uses. Let me quickly grab two iron ingots and let's do something like that to get iron shears. So let's do this, 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 and this. It's no luck, eh? That is unfortunate. Again, if you do break these with your fists, once they've grown up into tall flowers, you won't get them. You do have to use the shear to actually get those flowers. We don't need any of these just yet, but they are going to come in useful when we get started with Batania. For now, we can just go ahead and dump all of these into the system and try yet again to get a mystical black flower. There we go. There's our mystical black flower. So once we have at least one mystical black flower, we can take that, craft it into two black petals, and then those black petals can be utilized with a pestle mortar, which is just made with wood, to get black dye. And the good news is that you can plant these mystical black petals and then run to grow them into tall flowers. We can then shear those tall flowers, craft the resultant tall mystical black flower into four petals, and if we keep doing that, we can basically duplicate a, uh, an infinite amount of black dye just as soon as we grab a little bit of wood out of our chest here and use that to craft up a wooden bowl. And then from there, we just need a regular old Minecraft stick. And that should be everything for us to get a pestle and mortar. It is. And so now we can craft these into black petals and we can craft this into black dye. Nice. And then we can use that, of course, to get some of the vector plates going. Now, the only thing that we don't actually have to make the vector plates is, of course, the slime ball. However, there is a little nifty trick that we can use here to get slime balls somewhat easily. And that involves us jumping into the smeltering. If we get in the smeltering, that produces blood. And then if we leave the smeltering, we should then be able to move that blood to the bottom of the smeltery and then pull that out into a seared casting table and that should produce for us a coagulated blood which acts as a slime ball and so if we take that over to here let's see if we can't get our first set of vector plates made we do need to get some more stone thankfully we have some in the chest here let's make a bunch of these blank plates we'll make all of them that we can and then let's craft up our first six vector plates. And so these are super nifty in that they are gonna allow us to spawn mobs. Mobs will spawn on top of these and push them towards the mob masher. So something like this is gonna get the mobs to spawn. They're gonna move over towards the mob masher. And then once they hit the mob masher, they are going to die. So we do need to make a lot more of those. For that, we mostly need more sugar, but we also do, of course, need more coagulated blood. That's not going to be a problem. We can keep standing in the smeltery and then coming out whenever we need to eat to regenerate our health. That's going to be fairly easy for us to do. And then after that, the only other thing that we need is the mob masher, which also seems pretty easy for us to make. We're going to need a bunch of iron. We're going to need a couple of sticks and we're going to need a few diamonds. I think right now we're actually out of diamonds in the system here but of course we do have diamond seeds and diamond essence so we can craft more and grow more should we need to so for the mob masher we need two iron spikes which means that we're going to need six iron swords plus two here is eight iron swords let's go ahead and get uh, one two three four five six seven eight iron swords i then did also see uh, a block of iron i think each set of spikes also needed a block of iron so we'll get two of those and we need a third block of iron for the actual craft itself and so if we were to shift click this in we can make two of these once we have two of those it's really just a case of getting the diamonds because a block of redstone we can do it's just nine redstone and then from there yeah we just need three diamonds and so let's take the four diamonds that we have let's take another stack of ethereum essence and let's get a platform maybe even this one right here dedicated to diamonds so this is not quite full yet, but we do have enough diamond essence here to make all of the required diamonds. And so let's do something like this, make a bunch of diamonds and then like this and get our mob masher. Now the mob masher does require a redstone signal. And so I am gonna go ahead and craft a block of redstone. But what we should be able to do is just place this block of redstone down underneath where we want the mob masher to be. Let's say right about here and then place the mob masher on top of it. And now whenever you touch it, they take damage. Nice. So now it's just a case of us getting enough sugarcane and enough coagulated blood to make all of the remaining vector plates. 
All right, so we've got a bunch of effect splits down, enough now to get all of the mobs to the mob masher. The only problem currently is that um, right now we don't have any ender pearls, and so we can't set up any of the kind of item collectors, vacuumulators, uh, ender hoppers, anything that would actually collect the items from inside of the farm. And so I think what we're going to have to do as a temporary measure until we get at least one ender pearl is look at getting maybe two hoppers i think if i'm not mistaken that you can put hoppers directly underneath vector plates and so i think if i were to take these two and then if i were to go back over here what we might be able to do is get rid of this and this and then if we temporarily place down hoppers here and here those are obviously not going to like a centered chest right now which is less useful i guess what we could do if we make two more chests real quick and you know what, i'm gonna make another crafting table to save me the very short trip home if we do something like this and get two more chests chat is right here and that they won't work because of the redstone block that is true and so what i'll do is i'll move this redstone block then and i'm also going to move these hoppers actually as well so let me pick these up and by move the hoppers i mean i'm going to uh try placing them down in such a way that we can actually get the items without having to open the hoppers so i'm thinking if we put a chest here and we put a chest here we can then do this and this and then if we just put the mob masher back down like this and for the time being obviously once we get the like vacuumulator or ender hopper once we get rid of the hoppers we can look at uh, just putting that block of redstone back down but for the time being, we could just get a lever and place that lever above the mob masher. So if we took this and put it down, let's say right about here, like this, that should work and the hoppers should also still work. And at that point, we could uh, temporarily break these logs here. Again, it's not gonna look the best for the time being, but we're basically just doing this until we get at least one ender pearl. Once we have that one ender pearl, we can look at making this whole system much more efficient. But that should basically get the job done. So let's get rid of all of the remaining torches here, and then let's use our wand, which is almost broken actually, to uh, yeah make this just that little bit taller. Let me quickly go craft yet another wand here. Thankfully they are super easy to make. And then as I mentioned before, I think we will make this three tall at least. That's gonna allow all of the endermen to spawn. And I think that's probably fine. I think after that, we can just fill the roof in in the same way that we filled the floor in. And so if I were to quickly grab some dark oak logs, we'll use those to uh, kind of trim the edge of this mob farm. And then we'll just fill the top in with more stone like we've done with our other platforms. So that is unfortunate. I, um, I did fall through this hole right here. I should definitely have placed a block underneath that to prevent that from happening. You know what, just as a safety measure for the future, let me do something like this and like this. And uh, the reason we died this time is because we weren't on full health when we fell through, whereas the first time I did it, I was on full health. But uh, thanks to uh, Myriad visits to the smelter to get all the coagulated blood, I wasn't uh, quite prepared for that one, which is unfortunate, but is fine. Let me uh, finish building up this farm here. All right, this should be pretty much good to go. We've got a dark box, a dark room. We've got our mob masher. Let me get rid of the crafting table and then let me move over away from the mob farm. Again, you've got to be at least 24 blocks away for those mobs to actually start spawning. But I think that uh, if we've done this correctly, yeah, look at that, mobs are spawning. So the problem that I'm gonna run into is that I'm a fool. I didn't put down the last two vector plates. That is my bad. We made the vector plates and then we picked them up. I meant to put those back down over the hoppers. So if I do, I'm a little worried if I put it down from the side here, it's gonna face the wrong way. They're quite particular about the way they face. If you hold shift, by the way, you don't get affected by the vector plates. And so you can walk on them freely. If you let go of shift, it's gonna move you uh, as it would move any other entity. But one, two, three, there we go. That should now be working. You can see already we have managed to get a couple of mobs. Now that the vector plates are down on top of the hoppers, the items should still get picked up by the hoppers and so should still be deposited into the chests. But now instead of just standing near the mob masher, the mob should instantly get pushed directly into the mob masher and should die fairly quickly. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there are upgrades we can make. I think we'll probably look at making these at some point in the very near future. 
They're not too difficult to make. Like the looting upgrade here is just blue dye, which we can get from Lapis, along with uh, redstone and gold nuggets. We don't currently have a gold seed, but once we do, we can get a ton of gold very quickly, and uh, getting the looting upgrade is definitely going to be high on my list of things to do. Also, the sharpness upgrade here, uh, again, same kind of situation. We have iron, we have redstone, we just need more gold. That's going to allow the mob masher to kill mobs faster. I do see an enderman there, which thankfully didn't teleport away. If it can kill mobs faster, that of course just means that the game can spawn more mobs in more quickly, and we should get more mob drops as a result. Let's see if we did get an ender pearl from that enderman. We did, nice, okay, cool. So next time chat, we'll come back, we'll look at getting a better solution to collecting the items that are being generated by the mob farm here. At some point in the future, we could also look at potentially getting something like Dreadful Dirt to allow us to more rapidly spawn mobs in this area if it turns out that that is something we need to do. We can also look at potentially getting some more storage drawers to allow us to store all of the drops coming out of this mob farm. And uh, of course, now that we have the ender pearl, we'll also look at uh, some kind of vacuum hopper situation to collect all of those drops nice and quickly. Unfortunately, though, we are out of time for this episode of Mystical Block. <laughs>